influenced by the animated films you watched as a kid? Ever dream of being an invincible superhero, a fantastic magician, an incredible fairy, or maybe you even dreamed of flying to Neverland? Yes? Yeah, yeah I know I did. We all did. So what if we could use the magic of animation to not only allow kids to dive into a fantastic universe of fun, but also introduce them to something real, something different from what they know? Maybe a little bit scary. Scary? Yes, fear. Fear of diversity. Fear of change. Or fear of the unknown. Imagine we could use the magic of animation to defeat these fears bridge cultural diversity and overcome the barriers that divide us. Yeah. What am I talking about? Well, let's be kids just for a second. I would like you to please close your eyes, just a moment, and think about the first animated film you remember seeing. What film was it? Do you remember what it was about? Okay, okay, you can open your eyes and go back to that fun universe after my talk, okay? So I bet that most of you had a very vivid image of that film. And I bet that at the time, you were less than 10 years old. They say that by age 10, we already established who we are. The experiences you have, but most of all, the experiences you feel stay with you your entire life. That's how important those first 10 years are. So I asked myself, what if we could use this incredible art form, animation, to do more? What if we could go beyond the story of a princess kissing a frog, a fairy granting a wish, or a dragon breathing fire? What if we could use the magic of animation to talk about bigger stories? Stories that are socially relevant and perhaps even culturally significant. How about the story of the boy from Syria? The dream of becoming a ballet dancer, dancer all his life and is forced to fulfill his dream somewhere else because of a war. Or the girl from Afghanistan who struggles to be a musician and against all odds becomes the director of the first Afghan women orchestra in history. And how about the story of uh, the young boy from Malawi? Who, thank, who through his incredible and creative inventions is able to bring to his remote village electricity for the first time. These stories of today's heroes are begging to be told. Our kids deserve to hear these kind of stories. Why not through the medium they love? Why not through animation? Let me tell you another story. As some of you, I grew up listening to stories of war. My grandmother was a child survivor of World War I, and my mom then survived World War II. Here she is in 1944. A story that my mom often told me and that stuck with me is how she felt during the bombing raids. She was a little girl, totally helpless and frozen by fear. Fear we can recognize when we see a photo like this one. Images like this, unfortunately, are not new and they won't be the last one if we don't act. If we don't try to change something, history continues to repeat itself. When I was 20 and during my first year at the animation school in Italy, the Balkan War erupted. And all of my mom's stories of World War II echoed in my head. There I was, watching a tragedy on television, a tragedy that was just a few hundred miles away from my home country. I didn't know what to do. I wanted to help. I wanted to do something. I didn't know what. Did you ever feel totally useless? Totally powerless? There is nothing you can do to change anything. After many years of working for the major animation studios, I finally felt ready to write and direct my own film. And I knew exactly what it would be about. The story of a little girl caught in the middle of World War II. I called her and the film Mila. I turned with great enthusiasm to all of these, those big studios. 
but soon realize that socially relevant things are not really their thing, you know? <laughs> no. No studio wanted to risk investing in an animated story that talked about the real war. Not one. But I wasn't ready to take no for an answer. So I turned to my colleagues, my friends, and I pitched them my idea. And the response was overwhelming. Using animation to draw attention to children that find themselves in the middle of a war really struck a chord. Today, the Mila team consists of 350 artists that volunteer, that's volunteer their time and considerable talent from more than 35 countries. Actually, it's more than 350 at this point, but just how was I able to draw and attract all these incredible animation professionals to volunteer on Mila, you might ask? Well, no, it's not my accent. <laughs> I learned that a true story told through animation touches people and moves people like nothing else can. This truth, unfortunately, is totally underestimated by the major players in the animation industry. Here is a sample of our effort in progress. Okay, so people ask me, can children really handle something like this? Yes, children can process and understand difficult, even tragic things. We need to give children some credit. Yes, there is a child in each and every one of us, but I believe there is also a small adult in every child too. Historically, animation, this incredible art form, has been boxed into a particular genre. It's time we allow filmmakers to throw out the box and bring a different kind of animated films to their audiences. It's time for a new approach. But where would this evolution or revolution come from? I'm looking at it. Yes, yes. It's all of you. It's all of us. It's up to all of us. The artist, the director, the storyteller can't do this alone. They need the big studios, the distributors, the producers to make this change. But this is not going to happen unless the audience, that would be you, demands that different type of stories get a chance to be made, distributed and seen. Yes, we can reach the widest possible audience and stem the tide of conflict, of aggression, and finally leave our wars behind. So, who is going to do something about it? Are you going to do something about it? Are you going to help me? Yes! Great. So, choose one major animation studio, or choose them all and write them. Write them and write them. As Walt Disney used to say, the way to get started is to quit talking and begin doing. Thank you very much. <laughs>